words of our hearts and our hearts to be the words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here once again. Many regards to the members of the Mother's Union I saw a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's, it's a real pleasure to be here and to share this time of fellowship with you. Um, tell all of those that decided to go on holiday because they heard I was coming. <laughs> that we shall look into their fires later. <laughs> so let's dive in into the readings we have today. In our gospel reading, we continue with the story where Jesus is talking about giving his flesh and his blood to those who were listening to him. And those were Jewish people. And they said, What is this young man saying? How dare you say? You will give us your flesh. You will give us your blood. When we have different dishes of nice roast lamb and uh, other stuff that we can eat, why would you give yourself to us? More so, the Old Testament discourages them and really tells them not to eat the flesh of anything, nor drink the blood of anything, for the life of every creature is in his blood. And that is why Jehovah's Witnesses refuse blood transmission from that part of the scripture, where the blood of everything is in it. In the life of everything is in the blood. So they are like, if you take the blood of another human being, you are taking the life of another human being into you. So that's where the Jehovah's Witnesses got their doctrine of no blood transmission. So the Jews were really angry that Jesus would say this. How dare you tell us? Your flesh, you, Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary, we know you. Ordinary carpenter, ordinary young man, why are you going about? Who are you? You are not even royalty. You are not any person of distinguished nature. So why would we even condescend to be listening to you? But Jesus even committed more crime. Is that he said to them, Your forebears ate the manna. Died. Anyone who eats my flesh will be eaten. And of course, the Jews don't want to hear anything against Moses or any person saying that they are over and above Moses. So, how dare you, on a certain leg, tell us that the man that our ancestors ate will not give us life? Remember in the Ark of the Covenant, the man was put in the Ark of the so they were happy to the temple, reminding them that God fed the children of Israel through their time of desolation, through their journey through the wilderness. And how dare you come to tell us that something in the Holy of Holies, that you give us something better than it. So Jesus was committing a crime. And that was why some of them left. They're like, this is too hard, they teach you. We should not even give this any attention at all. We should not give this attention at all. But we know, now having studied the scriptures, that Jesus is not talking about his flesh or his blood. He was talking about the redemption. He was talking about dying on the cross, being broken, literally being broken, and pouring out his blood for your, the salvation of all humankind for your salvation, for my salvation, for the salvation of all those in time past and the salvation of those who are going to come ahead of us if Christ doesn't return. Jesus gave himself all for us and he said eat my flesh and drink my blood because in that is salvation. In that is salvation. We can come up to the altar ten times a year one million times a day. And if you don't come knowing that this was the flesh and the blood that was broken and that was poured out for us, then salvation indeed might be far from us. Salvation might be far from us. In that gospel reading, when you look at verse 63, it says, the Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. 
The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirits and life. So in the word of God we find spirits. In the word of God we find that because the spirit of God empowers and enables us to live above our human mortality, our human frailty, our human weakness. The spirit of God gives us life. He gives us life that food cannot give us. He gives us life that relationship, friends and family cannot give us. He gives us life. Life to live beyond this world. <coughs> the life that Jesus gives you and I is something that will live beyond this world. The grace that Jesus empowers us with will go beyond our lives here. And that is why we need it. You need it, and I need it. In the morning, I told them about Ephesians chapter 6 that we'll be looking at briefly now. I'm a member of the Boris Brigade, and from Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 following, was where the uniform of the Boris Brigade came from. Because we have our cap, we have the sack, we have the belt, we have the shoe, we have the Bible, and of course, faith and prayer. And Paul, knowing that we face evil in this world, and it's only through the power of God that gives us life, shall we be able to live over and above the weaknesses, the evil we see in this world, sent to the people in Ephesians, put on all the armor of God. He did not say, put some on. This is like having a roast dinner and somebody saying, don't put the lamb on the turkey or maybe remove some Yorkshire pudding. He said, put everything. Put everything. Because in putting everything, will you get everything that God has in mind for you to live a righteous life? Look around you, see all the evil that is happening around you. Let me share the couple of stories with you. They might be terrible stories, but I need to show you how evil is in this world is. In my former life, I used to work as a lawyer. And I was volunteering in this non-governmental organization, a charity that deals with women and children's rights. And one day, a, a young lady in her perhaps 30s or thereabouts brought in a little girl that should be five or six years old. And the story goes that this little girl had been complaining to her mother of something for the past two or three years. And what is the story? That her father had been abusing her. So he started when this girl was barely three years old. I didn't know what to say. There are stories you hear, you will just become still. Because your brain is trying to reason. This is not a relative. This is not a neighbor or a distant person. The girl's biological father. We sent the girl, of course. We needed to get a medical documentation for this. Because the girl, the mom didn't believe her, but we needed documents. The consultants who examined the little girl said to us, not in the report, that whoever has been going there has been going there frequently. A girl of six years. Is this not evil in the world? I don't know if you do social media, but if you go to social media, you find out that there, there is this group of young men who are often on their scooters, well above the legal limit. And what they do is if you're standing in London, perhaps trying to find your destination or reply a message, they take off your phone. And because of the speed with which they come, you are still trying to understand what's going on. They are gone. And you begin to wonder. What gives people this idea of evil? But unfortunately, all of us are evil. We 
have our evil in different locations and degrees. And that is why we need the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, the Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. Desperately. It does not excuse you and I. Because you put in the right moment, you are able to do the most terrible thing that your heart cannot even imagine. I listened to a documentary a couple of days ago. A man saw somebody abusing his wife in the bid to protect the wife. He gave the person the beating of his life. And the person died. So Paul is saying to us, whatever you do, put on the helmet of salvation. Because your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, your being in communion with God, is really important. It's the only thing that will save your head. Paul was using the head as, a, a, as, as an example of where our source comes from. So we need to protect our head. We need to protect the source of our life. And our source is only in God. He said, wear the breastplate of righteousness. Protect your heart. Where every thought comes from, protect it with the word of God, knowing that Jesus Christ is God. So that when those things come to you and say, do wrong, you can tell the devil not to do. There's something, there's a TV program that goes on to show how people try to abuse the benefit system. There's a man who has 12 children. He doesn't work. So the government pays him benefits. And he was saying that he wants to have another child. Is this not abuse of the system? Is this not there are families that have two or three children setting up to make sure they have good life? And somebody that does not work has 12. Now people who actually need help may not get it. Some people, there was, there was one that said that he has a terrible back pain that he cannot do anything. So they have to pay him. Unfortunately, the person who was examining him, he went to the council. The person said, oh, please help me get that fire. He jumped up, pulled the fire down and gave the person. <laughs> that was the end of the case. Lying so that the ordinary taxpayer will spend their money on them. Well, we have people who have delayed it for assistance. Sometimes you don't get it anymore. So we want to protect ourselves because you and I are evil. Look at uh, what's going on in Gaza now. Whether you stand on this, whether you say it's a genocide or not, that is evil. People are dying. Wherever you stand on it, we can see who you evil. People are being killed. Bombs going forth and back, people are hitting the child tunnels in the ground under the hospitals to launch missiles from hospitals and people are responding to hospitals. So whatever you do, wherever you stand on it, it's obvious people. Not far away from here, we see Ukraine and Russia. Wherever you also stand on it, whether you think that that part of uh, Ukraine should belong to Russia or otherwise, or whatever you think, this is evil. It's obvious evil. People are hungry. People are dying. Unfortunately, now many people have forgotten about the war in Ukraine. Have you forgotten? The war has moved on. We are not in Gaza. It is still going on. Young boys and girls are still dying. And there are many other wars going on in the world that we have also forgotten. We have come to that fatigue. We have forgotten. This is why we need God. To protect us from being accomplished to evil. That is why we need to go. And Paul was saying that we need to protect our hearts with the breastplate of righteousness. We should also put on the gospel, the shoe of, put on our feet the gospel, so that we can walk in the word of God. So that we can walk in the word of God. Listening to what God is saying. Listening to what God is saying. None of us is bereft of evil. None of us. None of us. But it's only through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall you and I be the difference in our world? Be the difference in our communities. Be the difference in our families. There are families that don't talk to each other. Sometimes when I go for funeral visits, you can see terrible family dynamics. 
There was no reality to come to Greece because somebody said he was going to come to cause havoc during the funeral. Sometimes you go for family visits, you are just speaking to one person. But this man has other children. Where are they? They do not talk to each other. Even in our world. So we need the gospel of Christ to remind us that whatever we are doing is to the glory of God so that we pay attention, close attention to what we are doing. Take on the shield of faith. Take on the sword of the Spirit. Pray endlessly. Pray endlessly. And this is why the new is important. Because when we come to the altar of God, we are reminded that Jesus died for you. You. You alone. And when he's going to come back, he's still going to come back for you. So when you come here today, don't just come to eat the nice wafer and drink the lovely wine. This church has lovely wine. Fantastic wine. <laughs> so when you come, don't just come to drink the wine and be happy. Come with the mindset that Christ died for you and is reminding you that you must be different in the world. You have been blessed and empowered by the Spirit of God to shine the light of Christ wherever you find yourself, to be an embodiment of the grace of God. Jesus said, the Spirit gives life. So when the Spirit of God has given you life, go out there and shine. During the invitation, I will say to you, draw near with faith. Draw near with faith. Don't just come to Come with the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you actually receive that body that Jesus talked about and you will drink that blood which gives life so that you can feed on the Lord in, by, in your heart by faith. Thanks be. I think the, whoever chose the hymn, the, the graduate hymn, did a fantastic job. I love that hymn. I've known this hymn since 2006 or thereabouts because it's normally used for installation of figures or architecture. And if the audience will permit me, can we just sing two verses? And we are going to sing it with a mindset of prayer. Because it's only there that we see the power of God in us. If you permit us, can we sing verse 4 and 7 in a sense of prayer? The hymn is one, uh, 718. 718, verse 4 and 7. 